Hey guys, back again with another quick video. Um, this time I'm switching it out from Gorfang to a higher Spearman. Now the Spearman is a metal model. It's uh, really beautifully designed actually. Uh, Jez did these back in the day when the, the fourth edition box set was released and they released a set of four uh, or three Spearmen, I think three Spearmen actually. I think there were four Bowmen in metal. Um, so I received these from my mate uh, Georg uh, in, a, in a trade deal that we did. And I'm so impressed with these models, these metal models. I've never seen them before in, in, up close that I was really keen to actually paint one. And um, in this video, uh, we're going to look how to do like sort of steel, like a bright steel. Like normally I do the metallic, like non-metallic metals in like a dark blue uh, steel. So this time I'm going to switch out to do one in like a more brighter steel. So I'll go through my paints and I just want to select some new paints that I haven't really used very much of. And that's dark sea green is like a very dark gray, uh, neutral gray, which is like a mid-tone gray and blue gray pale, which is going to be like the lighter gray. So they're the three uh, greys I chose to do this armor. Now I have never, I haven't actually done, I haven't tested it before. So basically, this is going to be like a for me as well, um, just to check if this recipe works. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have to switch it out with another one, maybe re repaint it or whatever. But I hope it does because uh, I'll need a lot of practice in in doing this because I've got, I've got quite a lot of high elves to do. Um, so I'm using that, that dark sea green as like a base. Such beautifully detailed models like the scale armor on this um, scale mail. So well done, yeah. So very, very impressed with these and I'll be hunting down more of the spearmen and the metal archers in time because I would like to have um, either a mix of the plastic and the metal together or complete metal units of the <clears throat> both spearmen and the archers as well as the plastics I've got you know all of them is this as the high elves will be the next army that I will be doing for myself and I was just really keen to do a test model because, you know, uh, High Elves is my first ever army that I ever painted. So, in that sense, yeah, I'm really keen to see what I can do with them now, like all these years later, after having the fourth edition box set and painting all those plastics. I accidentally mixed those two colors together, but that's okay trying to get like more of a darker um, coat on there because I think it was a bit too thin before so you see a lot more darker now now I didn't actually sleep at all last night <laughs> and um, I was awake the entire morning I just couldn't sleep it always happens when I take my son to bed and he wants to sleep with you know he wants me to come to bed with him to sleep at night and I'll, I'll doze off for about like an hour and then I'll wake up and then I can't, I just cannot get to back to sleep after that. But luckily I'm on holidays and I could take him to his nursery school. So I managed to get a couple of hours sleep through the day and do some other things that I needed to do. And um, yeah, I'm feeling a bit more awake now and um, I can get this video out, which is good. I was keen to do this one actually and just see how it goes. So last, oh, in the morning, in the wee hours of the morning, I've been rebasing all my goblin arches, the entire archer unit. I have finished repainting the wyvern and rebased it and sanded it and painted it. I have completed more of my black orc unit uh, which is really shaping it well. I'm really happy how, with how that's going now. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to finishing that. I've done nothing with the Old World Army Challenge miniatures uh, yesterday or today. So that leaves me just tonight 
um, and tomorrow, because we're like sort of one day behind the US, or Canada, I think the guy is from. So that gives me a little bit more time. And you know, if I need to extend it for like a few more hours into um, the 1st of uh, May, then so be it. If I need to take a buy, I've got, I've got a buy up my sleeve, I can take a buy. I've already succeeded in painting more than a thousand points anyway, so no huge drama. But And uh, Jesse won't be coming until God knows when, like either um, next year or the year after, depending on what's happening. So I forgot I'll have to do the helmet. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of silver on these guys. And uh, yeah, thanks Rafa for your question before about why do I paint things in non-metallic metals? Why don't I use metallic paints? Uh, it's really just a, a preference thing. I think once I got into painting the Rackham miniatures, I really started learning how to do the non-metallic uh, painting because that's all they did. And that was like a very new technique to me. And I, I was fascinated with how they did it because um, they had an incredible style of doing these metallics the way they did. And um, so I sort of cut my teeth on those miniatures early on and went through all the frustrations of, you know, doing non-metallic metals. And I think I found a, you know, my own sort of recipe, my own sort of style of doing it that I'm sort of happy with. It's okay. Some people might say, well, it's not really metallics. They're not really metallics and they don't really look like metals, but um, it's more like a cell shaded kind of style, maybe like a computer game kind of graphic um, metal, maybe uh, that it resembles. And yeah, I, I like it aesthetically. I like it. I think it's more pleasing on the eye to me than metallic paints. But you know, I've seen people do paint stuff with metallic paints, and they look fantastic. They look really, really good. So it really just depends. Um, on you as a person and what you prefer. Some people just do not like non-metallic uh, metals at all. So, um, but yeah, for me, I think it's going to be um, my 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 way of choice, my technique of choice for doing armies as well. And I've got it down. I've got it down to an art that I can do it really quickly. Like for my dwarves, for example, I can I can sort of speed paint the non-metallic metals. Um, to a standard that I'm really happy with. So, and some people think it's, it's dry brush, but they're not dry brush, they're all painted by hand. Uh, I don't use dry brush, like, sorry, the airbrush, sorry, airbrush. I don't airbrush models, only for primers. Um, just, yeah, priming on the base coats and that's it. I do not use uh, airbrushes for any of the other, um, any other parts of the model. Um, I mean, I could do, it probably would save a lot of time, but uh, I prefer not to do it. Uh, yeah, I think airbrushing is good for like things like, um, like Gundam kits and all that kind of stuff, like large scale models that have like really large flat panels, which you need a lot of um, you know, high technique and blending and that kind of thing um, to pull off uh, certain transitions in colors and that kind of stuff. For like really small stuff like this, it's not really worth it. Uh, maybe if you're doing like an epic army and you had like a, a Blood Angels army or an Ultramans army, maybe then it would be quite useful for all the vehicles and all your infantry and that kind of thing. That'd be like perfectly good for um, airbrushing. But yeah, an airbrush is not ideally essential. I just prefer using it with a primer uh, to base coat all my miniatures. They've got a very fine, um, fine gradient of paint that sort of covers the surfaces really well and it doesn't clog up any of the, the details on my miniatures so um, yeah but thank you for your question about that for the non-metallic metals um, I think you have done non-metallic metals on your miniatures too and I have to yeah show the guy show everybody your uh, I think it was a ball boy unit or ball boy unit um, you sent me a photo a while back so I need to um, yeah put, post that up as well in one of the videos to show everybody because they look really nice. All right. Um, okay, so while, while we're waiting for that to dry, we know that the... Uh, well, is the is the shaft, spear shaft red? I don't know. I've forgotten. 
Are they red or white? I think they're red. In fact, I'm almost certain they're red actually. So yeah, the spear shaft is red and the gloves are like a brown color, like a beige brown. And the boots too, like a you know, beige leather color. And the, um, the skirt is like in a white, Now I've got Tyrion and Teclas too, so they will be models that I want to feature on the channel at some point. I'm really looking forward to painting Tyrion. I've never, I had, I think I had the model back in the day, but I, I think I attempted to paint it and I wasn't really happy with it. And I think I stripped it back or something like that and just never got to paint it. So, and never used him in a game. But Hyles were the first, first army I ever painted and used in fourth edition and probably I think it was the only army I ever had in fourth edition because the night goblins came later when I came back from the UK and um, I played them primarily in fifth so yeah it's got a good history with me in the high elves even though I don't really see myself as a, as an elf player as such they don't really interest me um, as a as a play style as an army but yeah I think between High Elves, Wood Elves and Dark Elves, yeah, High Elves will be my pick. They're my army of choice, I think, out of the three. So give that a base coat of red, and um, let's see what else we're gonna do. Um, well, we know he's, he's gonna go some skin there in his face so we're just gonna I'll start putting that down anyway some um, sunny skin tone for that uh, the leathers I'll paint with uh, brown so we'll use the same brown which is like a almost like a snake bite leather color and we'll have to start referring the paints in those in those in those terms like the old citadel paint color, uh, color names it's um uh yeah, that brings back nice memories of, of using all those paints back in the day those still the best paints i reckon um, i'm just going to just do some lining in i'm not actually wearing my glasses which is unbelievable don't know where they are And my goal for the High Elves and the Goblins is to recreate the, the battle report. It's in the High Elf Army book, uh, the first one for uh, the first, first time it was released. So it's just two books, one for fourth edition, one for fifth edition. So in the fourth edition book, which I have, it has a battle report between the High Elves and the Goblins, and it's like a, it's like a surprise or flanking attack. That the goblins, um, uh, yeah, flank on. Uh, they flank the high elves on either side, and uh, there's like a bridge, and there's a lot of hills and uh, trees and uh, like rocky outcrops and that kind of thing. So it looked like a little fun little scenario that I would like to play, even though it looks really uh, um, like the way they they do the well, especially in fifth edition where they did all the scenarios. Yeah, the flanking scenarios, I haven't actually tried them yet because I think they look really unbalanced, like the point-wise, like the the attack is always double the points of the person who's being um, surprise attacked. And it just doesn't seem right to me, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll have to do it one day, I'll have to do it. We usually just play pitch battles. 
uh, all the scenario that ones in the campaign campaign supplements. We play those two, and um, I really like those, which are very similar anyway to the ones in the book anyway, in the battle book. And Dan asked me about what kind of movies or uh, music do I listen to to inspire me as I'm painting or doing my hobby. Uh, that's a good question, Dan. And I sent you a reply on that. Um, it actually did remind me that I used to listen to the soundtrack for Dracula, Bram Stoker's, Bram Stoker's Dracula, when I was first painting my um, High Elf Army, actually when that movie was first, you know, released and that kind of thing. Which I, which I did see again uh, not so long ago, I think it was on Netflix. It's a great movie. Uh, but I like the soundtrack and that's got a really sort of... Um, like it's got, a, it's got a deep mood to the music that I find that sort of suits the... Well, especially like Undead Armies, I suppose, yeah, like you're painting Undead or even playing playing a game using Undead, maybe that, that sort of soundtrack would be quite cool to play in the background as you're playing a game. But usually these days I just like watching Netflix or Amazon Prime or uh, YouTube channels. There's quite a few, YouTube, oh, there's not that many actually, but a few YouTube channels I'm subscribed to, including yourself, uh, yeah, including yours that um, I will watch. I'm sorry if I'm not making too much sense. I've only had about two hours sleep in the last um, 48 hours maybe so yeah, probably not gonna be all that cohesive really but um, just bear with me oh, here's my glasses here are my glasses here Okay, so I think that initial grey is almost dry, so I'm just going to mix that in with the other natural steel colour. Give that a... Well, we might just do the helmet first, I think, for this one, for this video. Just concentrate on that and see how it goes. How, see how the colors work together um, and see if I'm happy with that overall sort of look to the to the, uh, to the metallics, or well, non-metallics I should say, but. Sort of just um, applying the lighter coats of color on the top, around the sides here. Yeah, so if that's if that's successful, then I can sort of continue with those. With the, using the same colors and just keep those three colors as a base for the for the for the metals. So I'll just add some of that pale gray in there as well. So like I always say, if you don't have those colors, you can just find equivalents um, to those. Even if you only had two colors, like two grays, then you can have one lighter, one darker, and then just add the lighter one to the darker. You can add blue to it if you wanted to, if you want to make more of a bluish sort of tinge to the armor, um, which I think that the original ones did have um, some blue in it, like um, some blue ink or something, I think they, which you might do. As this is kind of like my test model for the army, and it's got this nose guard here, isn't he? Okay. So 
me one second. I'm just gonna put on my magnifying lenses because I'll just attach those to the frame of my glasses just so I can see up a bit closer. Um, okay, so we're just gonna use more of that lighter gray. I don't think it was pale gray, what was it? A oh, blue gray pale, it's called. It's a very strange name. And you can just make it as bright as you want. We're just adding more lighter grays as you go. I do like that natural steel color because it reminds me of another color that I used to use for non-metallic metals, which is London gray. It's a really nice mid-tone color, so. Bad Moon knob that I worked on last time with the with the um, doing the uh, flesh colors and that kind of thing. I'll probably continue doing that uh, from time to time. I have put some extra colors on him now, just laying down some um, like foundation colors on him. I uh, felt like foundation colors, as in like the sort of the primary colors that I'll be looking to paint him in. Usually, just they're mostly just black and yellow at the moment. So I think it'd be mostly just black and yellow. But uh, yeah, I look forward to painting him and getting stuck into my second end, second ed 40k. Um, well, it's really Road Trader because all the models are really mostly Road Trader models, with a few exceptions to the characters that Kev did for the second edition uh, book. But I think he'd already left by then, so I think Al uh, Alan Perry, Michael Pelly Perry took over. And they did a lot of the um, designs after that, and I'm not really too keen on those, if I'm being honest. Now, Kev did send me some photos, which I can't share with anybody uh, for a private, uh, private company or private person that had him commission some orc commandos and um, what else did he have like jump packs and like all that kind of stuff and lots of different weapons and sticker bombs and a whole yeah a whole range of orcs that are basically the um, the commandos which were uh, I think the ones that Perry's the Perry's did like a re-sculpt of the storm boys that's the one I'm talking that's what I'm thinking of they're storm boys yeah he did a whole range of those for somebody I still got my hard drive. I, I just can't. You tell me not to share them with anybody, so I said, okay, no problem. But um, yeah, if that person he has designed them for ever decides to have them uh, produced, yeah, that'll, that'll be something I'm very interested in. So as you can see, it's going to be a lot of work, especially if I'm going to do these in ranks of like 20 guys. Uh, so that's something you've got to take into account when you do like non-metallic metal paints is that, you know, you're going to have to invest a lot of time in um, in painting them. So uh, with, with um, true metallics, you're just going to have to just lay them down and then ink them and maybe just give them a highlight and then that's it. So... A bit of white there. I'm using white and not um, not ivory because I don't want any yellow in it. So we have to use white for the for the like the the real highlights at the end. But uh, yeah, I think overall I'm not too not too displeased with the colors I chose for it. Um, but then again, you know, you can you can sort of mix them up with any colors you like You could have like, you know, green sort of non-metallic silvers with like a greenish tinge to them uh, or blue um,
just trying to find a good balance between the light and dark. Now guys, I was going to ask you too, um, if you wanted to thank me for the videos that I'm making in any way, if you wanted to find a way that um, you wanted to send your appreciation if I'm helping you out in any way, or you just enjoy the content, this daily sort of content I'm doing now, I need bases. I need 20 mil bases, either with pref preferably with the like the horizontal slot on it. Um, I need bases for the um, like the orcs, which are like 32 mil, I think. Uh, I'll need uh, monster bases, like for creatures and that kind of thing, and the, like the large monster bases too, cavalry bases. I'm just sort of running out of bases, basically. So if you have a whole ton of spare bases at home that you're never gonna use, and you would like to send your appreciation somehow, um, yeah, that's what I'm really keen on, on getting at the moment. Plus, also, if you have the high off shields that came with the fourth edition set, those spearmen, those shields that came with them, or just blank kite shields, and you don't have any use for them and you don't want them, and you want to give them to a good home, then uh, yeah, please get in touch with me through the channel, and uh, as I, I'm desperately looking for those too. As I do have spearmen, but I don't have shields, so uh, in order to complete them and to complete the project, um, I'll need those at some point. I try to avoid eBay and that kind of stuff as much as possible, to be honest. I'd much rather just go through the community groups on Facebook or whatever. Uh, I know those people, you know, they know me now. And um, you build relationships that way and you meet people and it's more personal. I find eBay, it's good for some, some things, like if you're just going through like a particular store, like, you know, go to my flock and that kind of thing. Those kind of things where you've got like an actual web store that you go through, yeah, they're quite good. It's quite good for that. Okay, so, yeah, what do you guys think? Is it too dark? Not light enough? I think maybe not light enough. Adjust that by just adding a very thin layer of that blue pale grey order it's called. They should look really shiny and bright, shouldn't they? but I don't want it to look white, white, you know? So, something I've got to be mindful of. Okay, so it doesn't look too bad. There as it is. And I'll have to do some adjusting um, later on. Um, now, we're just gonna go back with that the grey and just try to do the weapon as well, the spear. And uh, with weapons like that, with the blades, I like to go with using, with like painting one side as light. And this one, I just sort of just paint along the edge here.
talking about TV series, I'm watching the is it Last Kingdom. It's like the Viking show on Netflix. I'm watching that again at the moment, so that's quite a good show. I quite enjoy that. It's got a good soundtrack too, so Dan, if you're looking for something to watch, I'd recommend watching that, mate. That's a really good one. It's gonna swap out chairs. I'm sitting on a stool usually. I just find that it's better for me to, uh, even though it's not as comfortable, and I've got really sore shoulders actually, I've got a sore, bit of a sore back, but just probably just been sitting in a chair for far too long, so. Um, but it is better for me to see what I'm doing. Yeah, so maybe I should use a blue-gray as an alternative to these three colors that I'm using. Maybe there should be like a tinge of blue in there. So it's probably a good one for Justin actually, this video, because he was wondering how, he asked me how, how to do it in like a bright silver, um, as he's thinking of doing his empire, you know, trying it anyway in a non-metallic metal. Well, Justin, you'll have your work cut out for you, mate, if you're gonna do it like that, because uh, I find the darker, the darker way, the darker metals are just much easier than doing it this way. I don't know why, maybe because maybe I'm just unpracticed at doing it with the lighter metals, but um, then maybe doing this army will give me a lot of practice and training in it. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. I might try to add a bit of a blue-gray. Um, oh, no, I might... Have I got it on here? Yeah, I've got it on here. I might try adding some of that. This, this blue here, yeah? Which is that scale 70, it's a Caspian blue. Might just try adding that as like a tint just to tint it slightly. Yeah, just so it's got a bit of a touch of blue here and there. Not too much, that's too much. Washing it off and just dabbing it off on the towel there. All I want is just a real light tint. Maybe that's all I need just to make it look a bit more colder. And to give it a bit more Dimension, maybe? Just add a bit more dimension to it. 
always looks very flat. Yeah, but I think that's a I think that's a welcome change or addition to it. Setting that real light blue there. Yeah, I want to avoid using like browns and that kind of thing. It's not really uh, suitable for the high elves. They've got like these pristine looking armor. Um, so I think blue and dark blues will be our sort of uh, final sort of shade and just to give a bit more definition in places. Okay, so I might leave this video here as it is now. And then um, in the next one, we'll go over the scale armor and we'll do the, hopefully finish up the spear. It shouldn't actually take too long because there's not that much on it, you know. Once you've done the leather, once you've done the, uh, he's got that sort of belt going across his chest there with some gemstones, it'd be quite cool to do. And um, his parts of his helmet. So yeah, maybe we can do this in about three sittings, I hope. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing my test model and see how it turns out and and hopefully you guys are too. All right guys, thanks for thanks very much for joining me again in another video. And I'll I'll, I'll um yeah, add some pics of the stuff I've been working on uh, during the um, during the early hours of this morning. So and uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.